Hello, everybody, and uh, what a great day it's been so far. Uh, the part that I love the most is that we're all talking about the same thing, but from completely different perspectives, which is another way to think of connecting the dots, right? These different perspectives of how we see so that we can get a, a, a holistic view, a, a larger view, a 360 view. And so I'm very excited. Um, I know we have a, a little bit of a shorter session right now, but I, I wanted to cram this in because um, Alicia has been doing some really amazing things with dealers. And um, we talk a lot about data and we talk a lot about people. And I think, uh, Alicia, you have uh, kind of the perfect situation of both. And so I'll let you introduce yourself and, and walk us through. Thank you so much, Catherine. Thank you for inviting me and having me along here. Uh, welcome, everyone. My name is Alicia Von Bogle. I am a performance manager, performance coach with uh, Merit. Uh, recent, not recently, uh, many, many years ago, uh, started my path down this crazy automotive industry. Been in it almost 20 years now. So I sold cars wow. in dealerships, I've run a BDC, I've worked for an OEM. I've worked for the OEM on the fleet and commercial side. So, um, you know, mm. I've kind of been in a little bit of everybody's um, shoes. And then being here with Merit, I get the opportunity to continue to do what I really love, which is helping dealers perform better um, and helping, helping dealers connect their dots, which that could be, you know, a, a, a variety of different things. Um, so today, you know, we're talking about connecting the dots and digital dots. So digital dots could be, oh my gosh, so many things, uh, depending on, you know, we think of digital, of course, like where we're advertising, right? As far as the marketing plan goes, where are we at digitally? So I really wanted to start by making this as easy as possible. There's been a lot of communication over these last couple of days, um, a, a lot of detailed conversation, a lot of stuff that's like, oh my gosh, how am I ever going to get my head wrapped around it? So I really wanted to start with two very simple dots, right? Your marketing plan, your potential customers. When we think of digital dots, I would assume that's what we think of. Where are, how are we getting our name out there? Where are we marketing? You know, what efforts am I putting into getting us out there in the digital world in order to get in front of more potential customers, get more eyeballs, get more leads, get more clicks, get more people interested in us. So there's that digital dot. And then there's your sold customers. How do we get from one dot to the other? Wouldn't it be nice if they did that themselves? Wouldn't it be nice if people just gravitated towards your website, clicked on a vehicle and went, okay, I think I'll take this. Click, 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 here's my money. Come running down to your dealership, swap keys. Hey guys, thanks, this was great. See you next time. Not really. It takes a dot to connect the dots and that's you. That's the dealership. That's the people at the storefront. That's the people connecting the people. What connects the potential customers that I want to grow my business? I want to do more. I want to sell more vehicles. What connects the I want with the I am is you. It's the people, the process, the technologies and tools. It's all of that and how well you utilize that at your store to get those potential customers into sold customers. So... Where do we begin? Again, talking about digital dots, there's a lot you can do with that. A lot of times when I speak with dealers and talk to dealers, it's, you know, we want to sell more cars, so we're going to do more. I want to get in front of more people, so I'm going to spend more money on all this ad spend, and I'm going to do this, and I'm going to be there, and we're going to do these things. And it's like, whoa, calm down for a minute. It's not that that might not work, but do you know, what, what's your current plan? What are you doing currently? And how well is that working for you? It's one of my favorite things to do, Catherine, and you know this, one of my favorite things to do when I first start talking and working with a dealership is I ask them, what was your total opportunities that you had last month to sell a, a, a new customer, right? What was your total opportunities to sell vehicles last week and how well did we do with that? 
Now, if I'm talking to a retail manager, they'll tell me those numbers immediately. They'll spit out close rates and click rates and lead counts and all ad spend. They're gonna tell me all that. If I walk into a fleet and commercial director or fleet managers and I say, hey, what was your total potential? Uh, what was your total opportunities last month and how well did we did we close those? Yeah, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I don't know. Well, if you don't know where you are, how in how can we create a plan for you to do better? Doing better isn't, I'm going to spend more money. I'm going to advertise more. I'm going to get out there. I'm going to have 14 social media sites. Okay, that's fantastic. And that's all well. But if you don't have a plan to capitalize, if there's no you in the middle to take those potential customers that you're going to get, right? You're going to get in front of all these folks. If there's no you in the middle to take these potential customers and to gravitate them into sold customers, it doesn't matter where and you're at. And Alicia, um, let's all acknowledge too that the, excuse me, that the number of um, leads and the number of buyers in the commercial space is really different than the retail side. And so what happens a lot of times in the dealership is there's these expectations of huge volumes of leads that turn into a small number of buyers and they go over and look at what's happening on the, on the commercial side and it's really kind of flipped. It's like smaller numbers of leads, but each buyer is has the capacity and the and the and typically buys significantly more vehicles. Correct. Because your buyers, you know, and your buyers also worth more. So a smaller amount of volume, right. which means we really have to take care of them. Also, and I'm not being like it, this is a more difficult metric to measure. What was your potential opportunities? What was your total opportunities? Fleet and commercial, that is far harder than just running some reports inside your CRM. We're going to talk about CRM here in a little bit. I might ruffle some feathers and get people excited and that's okay. I hope I do get people excited. It excites me to talk about it, uh, but it is, it's a harder metric to measure. It's a harder metric to measure because we are not yet accustomed to using our tools and technologies to help us get to that. But that's, you know, I, I know, I know we're at a shift in this industry. I mean, talking about EVs and all these things and being collaborative yep. with all of our partners, I know we're going to get here and it's going to be, you know, something that is tangible and we well, show can us measure. some stuff that you can, and we can. You can do. Yeah, absolutely. So I talked about people, process and technologies, right? So absolutely. It has to start with your people. Uh, if anybody's ever been dumped before, you may have heard the phrase, it's not you, it's me. If, if you've ever heard that, I promise you it's actually you. Uh, <laughs> sorry. Uh, I might be breaking some hearts there. But it's the same thing as when you lose an opportunity or you call a customer and you have the, oh, you did, did you conversation? Oh, you bought somewhere else. Oh, you did, did you? It's not you, it's me, not you. It's you, it's your people. Uh, not to say that they are lazy and they're not doing their job right, but at, at uh, NTEA, we talked a lot about COVID selling and being more consultative versus just being the one and done selling. And that's really where we have to dig in. It has to start with our people. But if our people haven't been taught, if they haven't been trained, if we don't lay out the plan for succession for them, then how are they supposed to, um, how are they supposed to perform? And it's particularly yeah. difficult in an environment in the retail where it is very um, sales oriented as opposed to consultative. And consultative is required for business to business, period. Consultative is required. You right. nailed it. Yeah, you nailed it. Um, and not Let's just go. being cons not just being consultative, holding your people accountable to doing so. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's the one thing to to train. You know, to have that salesperson and you trained them and you've laid out all the opportunity in the world for them to have. And here's the path to succession. And here you have to do. We have to hold them accountable to doing that. And I guess we because can do that with processes, right? It's real easy to fall into bad expectations, you know, into bad habits and whatnot. I have a little image up here on the screen. It's, you know, far too often. And again, it, it falls into processes, which is which is what this screenshot is. Someone submits a lead on a truck and we send them a marketing piece on a not a truck, right? Something completely unrelated to what it is that they're asking for. So your people have to have have to be trained, but they have to be trained on the processes that we want them to do. And this is where it really, this is where it gets you know, time consuming and it sure does. Uh, and this is where the accountability and the willingness to change. I heard somebody yesterday say, 
uh, speed, the, the, the speed of change or the speed of unchange. Um, and that's kind of where we are. We, we really, we really need to dig in here. We really need to, um, change the way we're used to doing things, change the way we're used to prospecting, change the way we're used to communicating with our customers, change our unwillingness to use our technology and tools, which I'm going to get to just here in a quick minute. But it's not the same. It's not the same as we used to be. After the sale communications, you want to talk about being consultative and, and earning that customer for life. You know what happened during COVID? We had to cheat on our dealers a little bit, not because we wanted to, because you didn't have what I needed when I needed it. So we had to cheat on you. You know what happened? A lot of those folks didn't come back. They divorced you. They didn't just accidentally cheat on you one time. They done divorced you and left because the grass was pretty green when they had to go across the road. Loyalty isn't once what it once was. So we better do an awfully good job of communicating with our customers, both future customers, current customers, uh, and being that full, you want to talk about earning, management earning company, that loyalty, earning it, earning that loyalty, yeah. be that trusted advisor, be their consult, you know, be their, their full um, consultant. Don't just mm -hmm. be a one and done for there. Don't just say, I'm going to sell you this vehicle. Uh, we, we have to do about, we just have to do a better job with, with yep. the processes that's laid out in the communications. And the way we do a better job with communicating is with our technology and our tools. Audience, I'm gonna ask you a question and you guys can feel free to type in or I'm gonna give you my email address and all my contact information, blow my phone up, blow my email address up. Uh, how many fleet and commercial sales folks, dealers, how many of you guys love your CRM? Just kidding, <laughs> nobody's hands going up. Nobody loves their CRM. Everybody hates it. It's not an excuse not to use it. I understand your out of the box retail CRM does not work for fleet and commercial. I get it. I know this. That is not an excuse not to use it. That is not an excuse not to invest the time that it takes to develop it and the time that it takes to get it to function for you. I understand it does take time. Um, but it's not an excuse not to use it. We cannot use a pen and paper method and expect us to be really good partners to our clients because we're never gonna remember. We're not gonna remember to follow up. We're not gonna remember to call them. We're not gonna remember to tell them when the ordering window is open. We're not gonna remember to tell them that they can't get this van, truck, whatever, or they can get this van, truck, whatever, so they better order it now or we have to wait until we cannot do that in our human brains with pen and paper and a Rolodex and a sticky note follow-up process. Um, and, and you wanna talk about prospecting and networking. We cannot go, collect a bunch of business cards and throw them in our front desk and wait for them to get dust on them. The dots won't connect themselves. The dots won't connect themselves. It takes a human person's. And the only way to do that effectively is with our technology. Our CRM suck. They're not made for fleet and commercial, but they can be, but they can be. You just, you need to hold your technology partners accountable. That CRM ain't free. You pay for that. Call them, tell them to get them to work for you. Uh, it, 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 there's no more excuses. Um, you know, speaking of technologies, boy, we all got one of these in our pockets, don't we? Um, I hear they're giving them out to newborn babies now. When you, you know, you're born, you get your birth certificate and you get your first iPhone. Isn't that cute? Uh, we all have the technology at our fingertips, but we're not using it. Video is so underutilized, both retail and fleet and commercial. But you want to talk about the 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 client that doesn't have the time. I don't want to have to worry about the difficulties. I just want this easy. I just want to deliver my bread or I just want to get to my next call that I need to get to. I don't want to have to exchange emails and phone calls and, and you're going to call me during your business hours, which is also my business hours. But I'm not going to call you back. This is so underutilized. Take a video, video introduction of yourself, video introduction of the units you have on the lot, video introduction of how well that upfitted vehicle is going to work for whatever your customer needs it to work for. Video pricing, video explanation of the financing, the telematics, all of that stuff. We like video. Catherine, do you TikTok? You watch YouTube? You know, I um, I do like video. Um, as you were talking, I was thinking through some of the studies that we've done around, um, you know, how much the richness of the of the visuals affect 
the engagement on on our dealer websites and on Convoy and stuff like that. And we we actually have data that shows that numbers of photos and certain types of you know uh, additional in product information, walkarounds, etc. I think it's great. And I think, you know, the other thing that's really great is that it used to be that video, you know, in the old days, it was so expensive and it needed to look really fancy and all of that. And now because of FaceTime and people walking around with their phone, it's not, it's not something that somebody's going to look at and say, oh, that doesn't look professional. They're going to look at it and say, thank you. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. My, uh, my, my husband works in construction. He drives a uh, a commercial vehicle. He drives a work truck with upfitted with toolboxes and stuff. Watches TikTok. I shouldn't say all day long. Hopefully his boss isn't on this phone call. <laughs> he doesn't watch TikTok all day long. Loves it. Loves the dang TikTok. We love to consume our information with pictures, images, and video. Um, but we're so afraid to use it. You know, I don't know why. Like, what would I take a video of? Nobody's going to want to watch that. Everybody's going to want to watch that because they can watch it, rewind, watch it again. What did they say again? Oh man, that outfit is really neat. Did you see that? This has the capability to do these things. That's really going to help me and my business. Now I do want one of those. Um, because again, yeah. we have to sell, we have to actually sell vehicles. You know, people aren't just going to flock. But I think half. of it is less <laughs> of selling it and more around helping people find the, the right work tool for their business. Yes. I mean, and it it's really hard to do that with lists of stuff. With I remember uh, the stuff. first time I went to an upfitter and I saw manufacturing and I saw they had this little hook on the side of the back of the bed. And I said, well, what is that? And they said, well, see, there's one up on the front of the passenger side as well. That's for carrying hundred foot long pipe because there's no, and I'm like, oh my God, how do people know this? Like, this is, a, but how do we tell them that? That would be a great kind of thing, right? It is. Yeah, it really is. I mean, the power of video messaging and video marketing and video communicating. Um, make What are we doing right now? Right. Make the customer <laughs> connections. Make the customer connections. You have the technology at your fingertips. It is not an excuse not to do it. Your CRMs can all help you with that. You don't need to... Uh, invest in a video vendor. You don't need to do all of that stuff. It can work. It just takes a little bit of work. Uh, and speaking of work, okay, my, okay, fine. It might take a lot of bit of work. Fine. Um, you might be feeling like Elmo here. He's overwhelmed. You know, sometimes I get overwhelmed. The dealers that I work with are overwhelmed, but at the end of the day, if you want to, you know, grow at the rate of change, somebody said that yesterday, grow at the rate of change. I want to grow my business. I'm going to sell my cars, but I'm unwilling to change and invest the time it takes into training my people. I got to have good people. They have to know what to do, the processes, and I'm going to make it easy for them to do that with the technology and tools that I encourage them to do. Only then will that increase in growing my business and selling more vehicles. Uh, and then somebody else said something yesterday that it like, I jotted it down. I wrote it down. I circled it. I was like, oh my gosh. It's not about the hardware, the hardware being the vehicle. I mean, it is, but it's not. It's not about the hardware. There's a lot of options out there for a lot of business owners to get them four tires and a steering wheel and something that makes it go. Whether that's an ICE or an EV, whatever. It's four tires, a steering wheel, and something that makes it go that's upfitted to their needs. There's a lot of options out there for a customer. It's not about the hardware, it's about the software. It's about the people. It's about the customer experience and making it so seamless and easy and flawless for them. Don't make the customer worry about all these technologies and how's this going to work and all the communication. Just make it, just make it super simple for them. And you grow more business, sell more cars, and you have a customer for life. And you know, Alicia, you promised that you would tell us how to get a hold of you. Why don't why don't we? I do did. That? I did. So screenshot, take pictures. Um, blow up my email address, find me on LinkedIn. Um, I know, listen, I know CRM is a big, I get it. I, I seriously do. I walk a mile in your shoes. I help dealers every day with that. Um, but please don't be frustrated. Get some help. Um, don't you know, be frustrated. And, 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 you know, work truck solutions has a CRM component of our platform. 
but it's really difficult in the dealership because they're expected to be using the retail. And so how to integrate and get the best uh, of the tools that allow you to do what you need to do. But then yep. so that that's really a goal that we have that we, so anybody that's interested in how to connect the dots there, we would be really interested in talking. Connect about. your own technology dots. You don't need something new. You just need to better utilize what exactly. it is that you have. Connect okay. your own dots. Well, thank you, Alicia. I really appreciate your coming and sharing with us today. Thank you, Catherine. Appreciate you having me. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.